Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, April 24th, 2022, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, been determined length, episode number 645. And how's that for a p- perfect introduction? <laughs> Haven't had one of those in a while. All right. Yay. So, normally at this point, we play a certain thing because of the uh, type of the show. Mm-hmm. Although it seems weird to play it, but still, let's... Let's talk about sex. Because it's in the title. Mm-hmm. Gary, explain why I'm kind of iffy on actually using that. Well, I mean, I feel... I, I still think <laughs> words it's appropriate although this is a subject that i don't think any of us expected to have a discussion about okay but that being said uh today's show is about aging adult entertainers there is a specific reason as to why um this came up we'll have the link um so this episode isn't meant to be somber but um, I don't know if anyone's ever kind of discussed this before um, as a as a topic concept. And so the catalyst for this is, if you were not aware, um, a very well-known adult entertainer in the bear slash leather, question mark, um, adult film uh, scene passed away um, unexpectedly recently. And uh, so if you've ever heard of Tit Pig, or uh, Steve Tippig or Steve Hurley. That is um, the gentleman that passed away. Uh, and he was um, young uh, in terms of his age. That was the thing that kind of stood out. Um, mm. He was 64. So uh, I, I saw it shared on Twitter. Someone was like, you know, RIP, you know, Steve Tippig Hurley. And that's all they put. And then a whole bunch of people, of course, I was like, so then I'm like, you know, reading through the comments and then eventually some a couple folks linked to the article um, that I have listed here, which is very short. But um, he which I did not know that there was this group called the Palm Springs Leather Order of the Desert and that mm. he was a former president of. Um, but he passed away apparently on Easter Sunday um, on the 17th. Um, and from what I understand, the cause of death wasn't um, released. And I don't know if it has been been said since then or not yeah um so what this comes down to is is you know we're getting older we've we've kind of talked about this before as co-hosts but um i guess the thing that i wasn't really mentally ready for is learning like as i'm aging that people who i were uh, like a part of my development in turning out like me learning about my interests and and what I enjoyed and what got me off like that those people will not be around much anymore and like adult entertainment kind of suspends things for us like weirdly yeah um and I don't mean that in a negative way but like I think of you know for everyone out there of kind of in our age group that has downloaded terabytes of adult film from the internet or has converted vhs tapes and dvds and you know like of film from the past um you know people get suspended in like that captured moment yeah. but we don't necessarily see them anymore like i think about um 
uh, Jack Radcliffe. Haven't really seen or heard anything. Um, so if someone was to say to me, you know, they mentioned that name, what comes to mind is what I last remember of them, which is probably a good 20 some odd years ago in the way they looked. So I'm not sure um, where they are now. And so uh, the fact that we will have more of this coming in the future was something that I, you know, was really in intrigued by. But I was also like, wow, mm -hmm. that's a thing. I mean, I, I guess we do this with like Hollywood celebrities in a way. Um, in the world of comedy, we've had some deaths recently. Um, some of them were unexpected. Um, so... It's just one of those things that like really kind of stood out to me because like I've already had a couple of folks that uh, men in the adult film industry that I know that are not around anymore. Um, and I found out about this is like years ago. Most of the time when I find out about it, it's related, honestly, just to HIV and like the AIDS epidemic, like, you know, that they mm -hmm. that was a, a part of who they were. And, and that's um led to their uh, passing on where this is a little different. And I was just kind of like, whoa, okay. And I don't know. It really kind of got me thinking about that and like how we feel about it and whether or not this is even relevant. Like if you were to see a film, you know, with a person in it that, you know, that's not around anymore, whether or not that will matter to you in your personal moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <I guess. laughs> it is rather interesting gary because i when you put this out there i again you didn't have the article or anything listed and i was kind of like aging adult entertainers okay so we're gonna talk about like the the stars we know who have been around for some time or were maybe flashes in the pan but have left a mark and curiosity about like where would maybe where are they now um, this is a little bit more somber, but it, it kind of falls in that line a little bit. Um, cause it got me thinking. So for all of you who remember like older episodes of this show, I used to have, a a, a, a bookshelf full of like Bear Films porn, like full of all of these different ones. And I mean, it had a few others, but you know, mostly bear films. And I was religiously about, you know, getting those and buying them and getting them like right when they came out and everything. Um, I don't really watch those much anymore cause they're DVDs and I don't, they're upstairs and I don't have time for that. Um, and now with the, for everyone that didn't hear pre-show, uh, with the new computer, I no longer have a, um, DVD player like downstairs I, we have one but it's not working anyway um so it's kind of like a lot of the i tend to watch more things i can grab online um um i'm a big like xtbs hamster all of those sites kind of thing to watch like that's my usual thing um the occasional um i'll occasionally buy stuff um uh, through sites you know if i like them but Again, it's very much becoming a new genre, but I'm realizing like there are people probably in those videos. I if you sat back and looked and like, oh, this was taken at, um, like, in the International Bear Rendezvous in 2001. That was 20 years ago, <laughs> girl. If not longer. Like I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, like, like no, I, I know, like, like that, like, but that's, like, that's the thing is, like, you know, like who we, who we looked towards, who we enjoyed, they have aged, yeah, just like um, we have aged, and, and yeah. that's part of what this conversation is. I don't necessarily mean to have us focus on like the, the mortality issue, but yeah. it will be a factor. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some of some of the adult entertainers have gone from being young. Um, and they've moved into, I guess, their daddy phase, if there's a way mm -hmm. to phrase it. Um, you know, and others have, you know, left the industry, you know, pretty much overall. Yeah. Um, and you don't really see them anymore. And that's fine. Um, but it was just a really kind of interesting concept of, like, the the aging of our, you know, community, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I don't know, like, as an example, if I was to go to an event 
or just be traveling, traveling for work, traveling for, you know, pleasure, mm-hmm. leisure, whatever. And I was to see somebody who I used to get off to, but now they're their age that they are now. One, I don't know if I'd recognize them mm. unless they've stayed the same quite a bit. And then two, like how I would feel about that. Mm-hmm. It is a it is a shift. Um, as you said, like the the moments that we we know of, the our, our fat moments, our our porn moments, they are they are suspended moments in time. Um, you know, they are they were done at that moment in time, maybe over a few days, whatever, who depends depending on the filming. And then they were put out there. And there's still and many of them are probably still out there. Some may not be in um like circulation as it were, but you can probably find stuff. Um <laughs> I was realizing the other day um one of the first um porns I was ever given. I was given um two VHS tapes from a friend of mine in Louisville. Um, and they were basically recording. It, it was illegal. It was recordings of videos. Either it was done like with two VHS tapes and like copy whatever, or I don't know what it was done, but whatever it was, I had the, I have these three or four porns from the eighties. And this gentleman who gave them to me uh was like i don't i don't you know he was like i don't need these anymore and you're young i was really young then um like and he i just wanted you to have them and i was like cool i found those online the other day like just a, like a random video picture printer. i'm looking at this porn kind of like okay that was done in like the 80s mm-hmm. so we're talking 30, 40 years ago. Um, are all these people dead? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it, well, was, it, was, it was one of those moments where I found the video and just like, huh. And it hit me. Like, that's, I'm being honest. It hit, it hit me randomly. And I was just like, wow. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Did I, did I still, I watched it for, I definitely watched it for nostalgia moments, but um, I, like, you're kind of, kind of one of the things you're alluding to, um, it was a little difficult to enjoy, um, because it was, I was being hit with this reality check. Well, uh, so here's, here's the thing, I guess, that, to be fair, I haven't watched a lot of vintage, I guess that's the word to use, mm-hmm. um, adult film in a while. Like what I've been, mostly been watching recently, honestly, the only thing I'm kind of paying attention to is um, live cam. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not that I don't like film, but I guess for me, the film has limitations. Mm. And more often than not, film is is produced and, and crafted and mm-hmm. so I appreciate people who are willing to put themselves on cam because that's more real to me, mm-hmm. I guess, is like a key aspect of it. But that being said, um, I've seen vintage porn. Um, I watched a bunch of it uh, in my early years of like going out to like, um, well, not so much bathhouses, but more like adult bookstores, mm-hmm. because for quite a while, the only MSM porn or like. Yeah, honestly, the only MSM porn was like vintage stuff, weirdly, for quite a while. Um, But mind you, I'm talking about like back in the 90s um, Mm -hmm. to the beginning of the 2000s. So this is quite some time ago, like uh, straight porn, um, female, female porn, uh, buy porn was mostly newer. But like adult bookstores didn't really seem to like buy newer gay titles very much, at least Mm -hmm. for for a couple of years, I would say. or at least the ones I was going to. And then that really seemed to have a surgence. And what I always found interesting was that I saw this shift in this change in the film like selections. And for quite a while, it was like, you know, if there was like 20 films, maybe two of them would have be all male. And then over time, it started to becoming more even 
like a third, a third, a third, or a fourth, a fourth, a fourth. And then there's been a couple of places I've been to where it's like, I won't say half, but, but quite a few are MSM. And I, I to me, that speaks to the owner realizing what's bringing in the coin, like what's making the money. So they're like, give the patrons what they want because like, mm. like that's what you know I'm making money on. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, but that being said, so I, I haven't really seen some film in a while. Uh, but I think like there's a thing that we do that we disassociate or we dehumanize the individuals when we're when we're looking at porn, basically, um, because we're just having an orgasm. Like I was discussing this, I think, recently with somebody. And I said, one of the difficulties I have found in my adulthood is explaining to people like um, not to bring it to gender, but this conversation I've had mostly with cisgender white women um about because they they have difficulty or struggle with about like men and their horniness and like their ability to just have sex and not have like any emotional connection to it and i've tried explaining t in this evolution over these past decades about this and one of my philosophy points is i'm like for men an orgasm is like stress release it's like brushing your teeth um you know it's like you know a, a bodily function that you do every single day um, maybe not everybody, but like, that's kind of the way I view it. And like, and if, and if that's not a part of your, um, your personality, your behavior, your makeup, like your experience, then yes, it will be difficult to understand how like seven, eight minutes, 10 minutes is like nothing. And like, it doesn't really have a whole lot of meaning into it. Cause it, this conversation actually I was having with someone recently, we were talking about the difference between like, um, I guess like getting off and sex or like we had talked about like, you know, with Ed recently about intimacy and arousal, like, like those are all different layers of like interactions for folks and adult entertainment. I don't really see in the realm of a whole lot of something that you like are invested in. It's more like a means to an ends, I guess. Mm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm I I agree. It's 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 a if that makes if that made a sound, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the release and yeah, dehumanization. So does it like does it have an impact on us to learn that like some of the people that we see or have seen may see again in film or no longer around, or does that not really matter? Or do, do we think it will, if we remember and would that be a boner killer? I don't know. Like they're just random questions, I guess. I mean, personally, I, I it's really going to be a personal thing. I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, of how you react. It's like, I know that, that, you know, eventually everybody dies in one way, shape, or form. Uh, hopefully after a long, successful life. Mm -hmm. um, there are currently older people that are in pornography uh, still. Mm -hmm. um, like, how old is Rusty McMahon? He's one of the the older ones. That's a good one. Uh, I don't think Ashley does it anymore. I think he may have retired. I mean, he's he was been active recently. Mm. Uh, probably within the last couple of years. Um, but I mean, it's it's just it, to me, it's like especially the it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll probably be like, oh, but to me, I won't get too caught up in it. I don't think I'll necessarily burn bon killer. Uh, it's just that I can watch those old scenes of them and uh, uh, get my rocks off just the same. Yeah. Okay. So in 2010, Rusty McMahon uh, wrote an article that was on Salon.com called Confessions of a Call Bear. And in 2010, he said he was 47. 
So add 12, that makes him 59. Wow. But even now, there are some people that are still doing at least some. Oh, yeah. Maybe not be as, mm -hmm. as popular as. And so, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting when you think about it. Because you, when, when you mentioned, like, there are you know, still older, there are older porn stars, are older stars doing, like, some of the, there's a genre of porn out there that is, I mean, we know that there's, um, a genre of porn out there for like older men. Like we know that there's out there. Like there are guys who like older men, meaning like aging and and right. Oh you know, yeah, pa we, pass the daddy into the grandpa. Well, yeah, I was just gonna of. say like there, there's a whole genre within the adult film industry of grandpas and grandmas. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's the title that's used. Um, yeah. And so, like, I think there is an interest, but, you know, the whole adult film industry has also vastly changed. I mean, from when I was born to where we are now, it's had this whole, like, kind of amusement park ride mm -hmm. in, in terms of, like, you know, uh, the height of interest, um, popularity, but then there was always, like, you know, cost. And, you know, now, now everyone can be an adult film star. Like, technically, that was always true, but the means to the ends is what the issue was. Mm -hmm. Now, pretty much everybody it's more accessible. World, right, worldwide has the, the ability, the technology in some way, shape, or form to, possi to make that possible. Yes, like, you know, cost of living and, you know, the availability in their area may be different. But, you know, for the vast majority, um, we live in such a technologically advanced world now. It's almost possible for you to be your own entertaining mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. yeah produce things and i know that there i mean there are stars that i've enjoyed like their grow up into more daddy zaddy kind of moments um uh dirk caver is a perfect example uh his name just left my head. Colby Jansen has kind of definitely, you know, grown older, but is still, you know, doing stuff. Um, and it's just rather interesting. Oh, um, Steve Summers. That's one. That's one. Steve Summers in particular. Um, uh, I don't know how often he does them now, but I know for a while, like any time there was something somewhat new that Bear Films or Harry and Raw or whatever were putting out, he was in one of them. He was in it. Um and I don't know, again, I don't know how active he is in recent years, but again, he was one of those ones that it was, it was interesting. He came into it a little bit older than most at the time and has since kind of found this um, vitality um, through, you know, these videos. And I enjoy watching him because he is very much into what he's getting done are being done or he what he's doing mm -hmm. and um they 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 seem to be good you know to my knowledge anyway <laughs> and um um but on on a flip of it is is i don't think again i agree with jeff i don't think it's going to be on the person to whether the reality mortality kind of thing kind of kicks in and you it you know lose it you lose your boner thing i do think it's going to be on the person as you kind of mentioned gary um it is we have kind of i don't like using the dehumanized moment but that kind of is the truth like these are products that are created that are meant to get us off like this is this is out there for a reason this is why it was made so you're going there's going to be this slight disconnect between the human that is doing the role and the you know scene that they're doing um well the reason i guess i was like i don't know how else to phrase it the words are failing me but you know when at least for me when i'm watching adult entertainment i'm not thinking of them, of them as a person like there's an imagination aspect to it so i'm like imagining myself involved in some fashion mm 
Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's not real. I don't know how to explain that. Like, even though it's a real person. And so, like, I, I, I'm sorry. When I watched adult film or porn in the past, I did not think about them being married, having kids, having a life, having a job, like, you know, traveling, any of that kind of stuff. Like, like that did change with Tumblr before mm-hmm. its great demise. R.I.P. Um <laughs> You know, but and it kind of transferred over to Twitter. But what's interesting about it is, like, I've at least for me, I've really stepped away from a lot of produced content, and I'm now like paying more attention to. And I I did this on purpose, less of the stuff that's being put out by studios and more independent, like personal things that people do. And with the rise of like OnlyFans and Just for Fans and. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the rest of them are. Um, there's a handful of those, you know, platforms where you're paying them, and theoretically, it's going directly to the entertainers as opposed to a studio. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I guess I don't, I haven't really thought that much about it over the years. Um, and I've known some people who have done film, and they're getting older, and every once in a while, I meet, I might see a clip of them. But what's, but I guess there's a little bit of a disconnect because I'm not that close to these people. So like when I see them in the film, it's kind of the way I know them or the way I remember them. I don't know how to say that. (laughs) It seems a little strange. Yet if I was to write into them today, like that's not them. Like that was Mm -hmm. seven, 10, 15, 20 years ago, like whatever. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, um, yeah. Uh, Yeah. One of the greatest benefits of, of, the Tumblr demise and going to Twitter is I found uh, one of my favorite um, stars, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Steve Ellis, um, if you remember him from Bear Films days. Um, and I, I've connected with him on Twitter. Um, um, we've, it was a weird situation. I know him through, uh, uh, Cor- like through gala and choruses because he was i think he's a member of um one of the co- co- choruses on the north in the northeast or northwest excuse me and i was like cool and we actually happened gosh i want to say our uh, last gala i went to was 2016 um i'd happened to connect with like see him on growler of all places and i was like oh wow this is a surprise and it was actually him and um we were going to tr- I wanted to at least meet him because he, you know, see the con- his concert and you know meet him, but I didn't get a chance to because I was sick. Um, I got sick. Um, but like I've connected, with, reconnected with him through Twitter, and it's been this very wonderful like because he he's not again he's one of those ones that's not shy, and has definitely um, embraced the um, the daddy, mm-hmm. you know, in him, and, and he he was always the he had daddy energy if you were if you were you wouldn't call, mm-hmm. have called it that back then but he definitely had that like daddy energy back in the day even so um seeing the, him now and he again is not shy and he's got his own company and he's doing all this like leather stuff and i've seen him at leather events i haven't seen him at leather events i've seen him indicating that he was going to leather events i haven't been to those leather events but um you know it's i'm i'm i am I want to see, I want to meet him in person and, and get an opportunity to actually like talk to him. There's another one that I, I want to meet as well. Um, that I don't, and it's weird. Cause I realized like, I don't want to be like, you're poor and changed my life. No, that's not what I mean. <laughs> I just mean, I am appreciative of the work that you did and your, glow up now, grow up now that you're you're embracing and being still sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, still providing things that I could probably fat to if I wanted to. Um, and it would I just want to have that moment to just kind of like thank them, if that makes sense. Cause right. You know, it's a weird situation and knowing um, the possibility of of an encounter is surprisingly 
closer than I would have realized. Mm. It's more realistic. It's more possible. Um, um, Hadrian's another perfect example of that. It, I was this close. I know you've met him, Gary, but like, um, it's just one of these things. Like, I was like, I was this close to actually meeting him in person. And yes, he's been on the show and uh, everything, but like actually being and seeing him and talking with him and engaging with him as a real person in person, I think would Mm -hmm. be amazing to me. Well, it is interesting because um, through the course of like the past 20 plus years of being in, in the community, um, I've met a number of people and like you bringing up Hadrian is an excellent example. Like I, like I had to very quickly move out of my like fangirl kind of like mode when I met Hadrian at, um, fuck, where the hell did we meet? Uh, is it tidal wave? Yes. Thank you. I was like, it's a thing in Florida. Um, cause he and, and Bailey were living in Florida at the time. And I happened to be staying um, with another friend of mine. And I was like, but we had already kind of talked about, I think he might have already been on the podcast. So like there was sort of a a way to discuss with him, but he was at uh, the water park and he kind of had this entourage around him. But I was like trying to make a point of like going over and talking to him, at least being like, hi, like, you know, Um, but there was a part of me that was like, oh my God, it's Adrian. But like I had to quickly (laughs) kind of move beyond that and be like, be cool, be cool, be cool. Like, you know, don't. (laughs) make an ass of yourself (laughs) that's what i was telling myself and then you know we talked and and i talked about you know interviewing or whatever and he was like sure and he's like do you want to come over to our house and i was like "Uh, uh, 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 sure um so i did like i went over to their house and sat in their living room and recorded like you know that the thing that turned into like what i think two episodes um Mm -hmm. And we just sat and talked. I was in their house. I saw their cat. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> like I got a sense of their of their home and their decor, which is a whole different aspect of a person. It really kind of dispels your fantasy of whatever you think of a person when you actually meet them and, and get to know them, especially in, in their own space and their own time. So mm-hmm. I, I found that uh, really interesting and and sort of reaffirming, reassuring, I guess, or whatever that like. People are people like we put them on pedestals. We see them in a certain light. Like we have a certain viewpoint of them, but the reality is they're just like all the rest of us. Mm. Their life is different, but they're still a human being. Um, I had to laugh earlier because of what <laughs> Owen said in the live chat. This is a quote. Ooh, I like his pee. Wonder if he's married. Probably doing this to send his kids off to school. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning being an adult entertainer was for their for their child's education fund, which I'm so amused by that. And I'm like, but that's totally legitimate, you know? Mm-hmm. Very true. We see it all the time. We've know of uh we've heard the stories, the unfortunate stories that are kind of awful and wrong of like teachers and people who are been who were doing things um that weren't getting paid enough uh money in their jobs and doing things like OnlyFans and Just for Fans and whatever to make more income to sustain their lives or to, you know, have a little extra, maybe to actually go and do things during the time, you know, a little bit of free time they have. So um, I I don't like that these people got, you know, fired for that stuff. And that's, that's a probably a whole different conversation. But like, you know, um, the benefit now uh, of as you were saying earlier, Gary, about like anyone can basically become a porn star, quote unquote, um, or adult entertainer um, is with just like the click of the mouse. I mean, (laughs) I haven't, so I keep talking about this new computer. Um, It has a built in, you know, it has the web camera on it. I mean, and yes, we've, I've had laptops that have had webcams on it. This one's surprisingly really good. Um, and uh, it just caught me off guard. And I was like, oh, that would be fun. Not that I'm going to plan on using it in that way. Um, I'm a lady. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, Look at you dashing all of our entourage's hopes where they were like, ooh. <laughs> no, there will, there will, no. Um, anyway. Um, but, you know, I could very easily set stuff up and have a couple of cameras and, and 
go to town and do whatever and potentially make money. Right. You know, produce my own stuff if I wanted to. Um, and, you know, anyone has that opportunity now. And to kind of bring it back to topic, that's sort of uh, to kind of change, you know, add into the aging of, of adult entertainment. We're now at a point now where some of the things you used to be that used to be popular to get to, to do are no longer popular because as Gary, you mentioned specifically, like I don't do, um, I watch live shows. I watch, you know, cam things. I watch like Chatterbait or whatever I'm assuming as opposed to like actual going and buying porn in the store. Not that I think any of us ever actually did that. Um, I have a very hilarious story. I don't know how I got on their mailing list, but um, past few months, I will get an envelope and it's bland and whatever. And has like your, it has a little thing called free DVD offer inside. And I've thrown them off to the side because I know it's like junk. So I happened to open them um, the other day because um, I was like, what is this? And I was actually, I was clearing off the, the living room um, coffee table and I saw these and I opened them. Oh, they're, they're basically all kinds of porn. Like <laughs> it's, a, it's a catalog of porn videos. Um, and I'm like, and my, I will admit my first thought was people still order this over the, through the mail. <laughs> the moment you started describing this, David, I was like, Oh, I remember those days. Mm -hmm. I, re I remember the nineties. I uh -huh. remember being in college and how you needed to be discreet and like how I was buying buy porn films because I wasn't out. I mean, I was out, but I kind of was trying to, you know, not explicitly buy mm -hmm. gay porn. So because I wanted to see a man with a penis, like <laughs> I think that was my thing at the time. I was like, okay, I gotta buy like, you know, buy porn. Uh, so it's kind of comical to me. You're describing this plain envelope. And I was like, oh yes, very much so. All this like privacy um confidentiality discretion mm -hmm. like, yes it? yeah so jeff mm -hmm. um what i mean <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird but like no go ahead what Dude, what is your like what is your normal out <laughs> what is your normal outlet um like I am a mixture of like, I, I can get into some of the camp stuff, but sometimes it gets kind of boring because I'm like, I want, like, come on, like, get to what's going. <laughs> like, like, Chatterbait for me, I'll be honest with you, um, it's it's edging shit. I don't know. I, I <laughs> let me see the goods. <laughs> what about you? Like, um, what do you tend to, if you, I mean, do you watch, do you still, do you get into porn? And if so, like, what are you watching? What are you looking at? Do you want to see what I have open in my Safari browser on my iPad? Um, maybe not on YouTube. I mean, I wasn't actually going to show show. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to list off the titles of the pages. Okay. Uh, Nifty.org. Okay. Uh, X Hamster. X Hamster. It's actually currently at a search for uh, Big Bear Rump uh, because okay. I was thinking about. Do you, do you guys remember the PR Simon Productions? Yeah. No. I don't. Wait. Like Chubby Video 4 or something like that. Uh, mm -mm. Okay. So I found on. I, so one of the things I've been doing this entire time was you were talking about like old videos. Mm -hmm. and, and I was trying to think of the names of production companies from back in the 90s that I knew about. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and finally found Gay Erotic Video Index dot com and was able to find the PR Simon list that they had, which I'm sure is not the whole thing. Um, and uh, trying to find anything specifically like for a list of just titles. It's I couldn't even find Pierre Simon on the uh, Internet Adult Film Database. Mm. IAFD, by the way, is .com, if anybody wants to check it out. But they've got things like uh, 
Big Bear Orgy, uh, Belly Man's European Vacation, which will be video eight. Papa Menage a Trois, Daddy Video Four. Big Bear Little Bear. And some of these you can find on X Hamster. Um, I have found a, a, a thing where I could get some Cyber Bear videos. Uh, I did do a, a subscription to Jump Chub videos, which, by the way, a lot of older actors in there. Mm -hmm. Performers in there. Uh, I've got my uh, Bear Films account up. I, I also have a Monster Cub account. Uh, and then huh. I've, I've got OnlyFans. Those are the the pages that I have open right now on my iPad. Guess what? No other pages. <laughs> so we know what that iPad is for. So I was just gonna say. So, so <laughs> we we have realized the task, the purpose of Look, said. No, 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 that's the browser because I've got other apps. Oh, so like like if I want to go into my Discord for one of my things, I've got got different games. So I, I use it for more than just porn. You, 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 you right, use the right, apps. Right. You use the apps for other things. Yeah. You use the browser. No I'm kidding. I'm, and I, I do still have some uh, DVDs um, out there. I think I got the first Terry and Raw volume. Um, mm, mm, mm. God bless it. That's a. That's a uh, I did get a copy of uh, the por the porn DVD that I'm on. You never tell, ever, ever have yet to tell anyone the actual title. But people know I, what it is. I, no, we don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm sure, sure you found out and just forgot. At no. One point in time. Mm -mm. Um, I, I was also much skinnier at the time. Yes, yes. You, you um, uh, I think I have another one. I can't remember the studio that from it's somewhere in my closet. Uh, yeah. There's so some, I do have a couple of, 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 of porn DVDs, which I never look at anymore, but uh, yeah. mainly because uh, my Blu-ray players in my living room, and if I'm playing it through my TV, I don't want people to go, oh, you're, oh, 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 through the walls. Fair. That is because very fair. because the real sounds are any different than the film sounds. I, I'm a quiet person in bed. In bed. Okay. And now we know. Well, hey, I I'm pretty much quiet myself, but that's just because I like I'm always conscious of being respectful of others. Um, it is a carryover from when I was a child. My mother worked third shift, so being an only child in the home, like I just had to be quiet all the time because mm -hmm. normally, normally when I was awake and I was home, she was sleeping. So, um, but like I I've always kind of had neighbors or something nearby so i'm always more a person who's spatially aware of where i am and, and trying to not like make a lot of noise and i mean i imagine i do but and so if I do yeah happen i happen to throw that. anything on the tv i turn that volume yeah, i i have fair. done it i've I, i've even oh by the way i have an apple tv and what can i do with my ipad i may have done that a time or two no or three or four but I, I even have... possibly when I've entertained yeah. in my home, I might say. It's been a number of years, but yes, that, that is a convenience have... of the technology. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Chromecast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yep, same thing. Literally have a, um, so any, uh, I have a, a media player that's connected to my Chromecast. So if I'm playing anything in the media player, if I wanted to go to said Chromecast, I can mm -hmm. do that. Right. But you know, I just I just happen to know that that it does that. Never actually done that. Well, it's funny. So us having this like little kind of memory trip in you know, a discussion, so to speak. I have VHSs in my basement, I guarantee, from college and after. And I have DVDs guaranteed because for a while when I was active with the bear group, uh, with the bear club on our bear nights at the bar in the downstairs, like play area um, uh -huh. in the leather section, I would give them films to play um, mm. because I was picking them up 
dirt cheap, like, you know, at sales and stuff like that. So I was like specifically buying things that were more to the bared leather, like liking, and that would take them to those things. So I know I have that and I've got some stuff on digital. So I've got pretty much every medium. I mean, Mm -hmm. technically I don't have eight, 16 or 35 millimeter, um, (laughs) reel to reel, but yeah, yeah. I just know, um, for me, to tr- kind of bring it back, um, I know I love some of the stuff I've seen, and I really appreciate it. And there are stars I would love to see where they're at now, if that makes sense. Um, you know, for one reason or another, like their performance, our performances um, left an impact. And I would be curious to know, like, I, you know. Where are they at now some 20, 30, you know, years later? Like, when are what, you know, because, you know, again, we know this, especially now, like, anyone can be a porn star, and you can come and go really quickly. You know, you could be there and do, like, two or three films and then be done. Um, We know how the industry works. Like, they film several scenes over weekends, um, and ta-da, here you go, and then they put it out there. Um, so you could have been in four or five movies, just different scenes from different times you recorded, um, or the same time you recorded, and then you're gone. Um, and it would be interesting to know, like, I wonder where that person is. I wonder what they're, not what they're doing, but like, you know, what's their life? What's their life now? What are their, you know? Was this just a quick like? Can we, can I, we get a gay porn uh, or bear porn uh, reality show? <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> that that intrigues yeah. me because I think there would be an expectation from the audience to see a lot of like brown chicken, brown cow, but given their like their aging. I have a feeling it would be a lot more like brunches and coffee talk and like, <laughs> you know, like, like more casual, just kind of hang out and not so much, you know, which I mean, I w- it would be fine with. I would love to know. So um, to kind of bring a weird perspective to this, um, I didn't watch the whole season, but I'm, I watched the first episode. So uh, on Paramount Plus, the real world um, has they've been doing basically 20 plus years later, they started with the first season and they've been taking them back to where they were and kind of giving them like an opportunity to be in kind of the same situation, you know, putting them in this house, um, living together for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. And I watched the first episode of the one from New York and it was so interesting to me because I remember watching that season and seeing everything going on and seeing them, again, they, they grow up from then to now, 20 plus years later. I was intrigued. I, I Not enough yet to watch the whole thing, but that's a personal thing, um, sitting down and watching TV. Um, not from lack but, of interest, lack of time. Yeah, not from yeah, lack of time. And... Um, you know, watching this that first episode and seeing everything that was going on, it was just like, it's, it was intriguing because of the differences. You know, obviously, yes, they, they're all older. You know, they all look, you know, similar but different for obvious reasons. Um, and then, like, their lives. You know, some of them have been, you know, married for years and, you know, had, you know, have families, Um uh, some have married, divorced, you know, whatever, um, uh, moved on, changed, you know, don't even live, you know, anywhere where they were. And, um, you know, they have jobs and lives and, but some of them were kind of still the same, you know, in some ways, it was just very interesting to me. And I would love to kind of like, kind of, I know to bring it back to the perspective, it'd be rather interesting to see some of those people that we knew, maybe mm-hmm. found to enjoyed, to see where they're at, you know, to talk about their lives. Um, Hadrian, um, about not too long ago, posted a link to a podcast he did, um, if you remember Gary, 
um, where he was talking about his life and, you know, when he did porn and why he kind of stepped away and, you know, his life now, when we all know kind of through the show, some of the things going on in his life now. And it was just, again, it was interesting to me. I actually listened to the whole podcast um, on a lunch break or two um, just to kind of like, because I was very, it kept me engaged because it was a perspective that I didn't hadn't thought about, mm-hmm. you know, you know, as kind of to, you know, with what we've been talking about, like, I've not known that perspective and getting a glimpse into it and having someone really talk open and honestly about it was, was interesting. And to imagine getting a bunch of people you know, that did this porn back in the day and finding out where they're at now, you know, I'd be, I would be interested. I don't know how and what you would do with it, but, and what it would be in, in the overall grander scheme of things, would you make it adult? Would you make it like a reunion of, of porn stars and, and maybe seeing what all they'll do now that they're, you know, Older, wiser, maybe more horny. Who knows? <laughs> Possibly. You know? Yeah. You know? I think it would be interesting if, like, one of the bear events, probably one of the bigger ones, mm-hmm. um, perhaps maybe TBRU, um, did a – had, like, a panel, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like they do at, um, you know, at DragCon – um, you know, where they have a panel of people get together with a moderator. I think that would be interesting to have them like those that agree to be there and just have a conversation about life since doing film. If there are, are some that are still doing film, have them, you know, try to get a, a broad spectrum of people and mm-hmm. have them talk about like, you know, kind of go down the line, maybe a half dozen of them and, you know, be like, what has it been? What has it been like since 2000 or whatever? And, you know, and what do you think of the the current um, technology availability? You know, that kind of stuff. I, I think that might be pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And we all, you know. We all know porn. We all love porn. We all know, it, you know, in some way, shape, or form. Most of us do, I should say. We know what in, we we enjoyed, and um, and I think, I, you know, for I mean, for me personally, I know my tastes have evolved or changed over, excuse me, the years. Um, mostly due to just learning more about what I enjoy and what gets me going and what get, gets me off. Um, yeah. Right. I, I mean, I agree with that. And, and I want to say like one thing specifically for me is that I was a byproduct of the marketing. When I was a young adult, like I was totally buying into the hyper masculine presentation aspect of things. Um, I mean, we, we all lived through the phase of blue jeans, um, plaid shirts with the sleeves removed, you know, mm-hmm. and boots. I mean, you know, it was this, it was the bare uniform. And mm-hmm. so there was, there was that phase of things in, in, you know, the adult entertainment representation, um, you know, blue collar, you know, tradesmen, you know, these, you know, kind of very like gruff kind of things. And like, at eventually a certain point, I'm not sure when, um, maybe in the, the beginning of the odds or something, like I kind of like started taking a step back and realizing like, maybe you're just being sold. Like, mm-hmm. like that's all that is like you know it's obviously there to like make a buck but at the same time i was like eh, it's not really you know necessarily my thing and what i find interesting now more than ever is um seeing the the spectrum like the wide variety of like possibilities body types persons like all that kind of stuff and the one thing i think about a lot or keeps coming back that comes into my mind is um i'm not uh regretful i don't know how to say it like all i keep thinking about is this this common theme that comes back again is now in 2022 if all of this uh representation had been around 30 years ago i would be a different person because i see so much variety Mm-hmm. Of body types, skin tones, um, identities that like 
really significantly have improved my general thoughts and feelings about the male form. Mm -hmm. And because I had been cultured into this, like, you know, that people who have sex look a certain way. Mm -hmm. Which is really super messy because it was unrealistic. Everybody theoretically has sex in some fashion, whether with themselves or with others. And procreation is what it continues, you know, the human species, so to speak. So like there was a part that I just wasn't kind of understanding that like, yes, all body types, all different individuals have sex, but like, that's not the way the culture represent it. Like they, like they have a very specific kind of look. Um, and so now that we've kind of removed those barriers and people can represent themselves and they can post their own videos and their own, um, you know, pictures and that kind of stuff. I'm like, wow, how interesting. Now more than ever, I see all like varieties of the male form. Um, mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what I'm seeing. And I'm very appreciative of it. Um, and it's just, it's really interesting to me. Like I, I think about that quite often. I'm like, wow, if, the, if all of this today was available 30 years ago, how different would my mindset have been as a young adult in my development and would I be would I have been more confident in myself when it came to having sex with other people and selecting partners and those type of things would I have not been as self-conscious about my body and its composition and and those kind of things I'll never know it's it's you know backwards kind of thinking but yeah. <laughs> Owen <laughs> Insert porn title here. The reunion. Porn school reunion. Porn school musical. The reunion. Not produced by Disney. Right. Nice. Yeah. So that's that. I mean, do you guys have any other thoughts before we wrap here? No. I don't think so. I know I could fall down a rabbit hole, like, recalling, you know, porn stars that I would love to see, like, at said reunion. Um Actually, one in particular. There's one in particular that I would be very interested to see. Um, Dish. Uh, huh? Dish. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, so the one of the first bear points I ever bought was California Bears by Bear ah, Films. Ah, yes. And uh, that whole first scene, uh, there's like, there's Steve, Steve Ellis, who I, you know, again, I've mentioned him several times. Bruno Buck Brown. Bauer, Bruno okay. Brown. Yeah, like there, there, there are people in that scene. I'd be like, I would really love to know. I'm very curious where they are. Mm. Uh, Hank, oh Hank, uh, Wiley Hank. Edwards, yeah, Ray yeah. Wood. Uh huh. That's the other one. That's the that was the cute little like cub that Ray, um, Ray Wood was the the uh, bigger top and in, in oh. the first scene. Uh, oh, Bruno Brown was the was the smaller bottom. Ah, I was wrong. I thought it was switched. Anyway, and, and who who was who was uh, uh, yeah. So uh, in the first scene, that was uh, uh, Steve Ellis, Buck Bauer, uh, Ray Wood, with Bruno Brown being the primary bottom. Hmm. Uh, hmm. One of my favorite parts of that is the uh, ending orgy with everybody. On the back and and the the back patio and uh, uh, Steve Ellis getting fucked. I don't know. It's mm-hmm. one of those things where when you see a person who you normally see as a top bottom uh, is a, a turn on for me. Same. <laughs> Same. That was a that was. Yeah. And again, this was, again, one of the first kind of like bear porn scenes that I had, you know, had the, you know, joy of watching. And um, it, it, it is, it, it's burned in my memory. I, I, I recall pretty much everything that happened. I think I, I think I have a, a like maybe an ex hamster. Some of the one of those sites that you know rips porn. Um, um, I think I have one of those where they've captured the scene and re-imported it. Anyway, well, it's users. Yeah, 
And um, uh, it's just it's it's just one of those moments, like it's one of my favorites, and I'll probably it'll probably almost always be one of my favorites because yeah. I think it's just there's a lot going on in that scene. Yeah, I really wish that uh, the Bear films on their own site because you know how they have all the scenes. And they have some of the scenes from the bit, original videos that they had made mm-hmm. before they started having the streaming site. Uh, I wish they would get the rest of those scenes on there because they don't mm-hmm. have all Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that would be a fun re- one to see to kind of like remember. Um, maybe we could put a, put a bug in the ear of like someone that does like TBRU or something are a big bear um, event that we all know. Well, the reason why I was saying a bigger one is because it's more likely you're going to get the adult entertainers to be at said event um, to make that possible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, and, and it would have to be, I mean, you know, and there's a couple of factors to it. If they get invited, whether or not they, it's a paid gig, um, are they really going to be there? So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of different aspects of it. But I think that might be interesting and and hopefully, like, insightful for, mm-hmm. like, younger generations. Yeah. But I don't know. Might be mm-hmm. a limited audience. <laughs> All of us who are who are who are older as well. Who enjoyed their, their their porn scenes back in the day, sitting in the audience, being like, uh, "I wonder what he looks like now." You know, wondering what they look like now. <laughs> Girl, Ooh, look at that one. Mm, mm-mm. 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 <sighs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> anywho, so uh, adult actors are getting are adult entertainers are getting older. But it, so does are we? And some of them just grow better looking, like all 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 three of us. Although we're not adult actors, we're just adults, and we're uh, just putzing around doing a podcast. Why, for no real reason at all. At least I'm not. Besides the fun, it's a hobby. Here we go. Anyways, uh, anything else before we go? Mm-mm. All right. With that. Uh, let us know your favorite porn actors. You can do that mm. in plenty of places, such as going to our website, comesoutloud.com. You shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Or leave us a voicemail at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can also comment on our Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, or right here on YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate places URL. You can also join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can also uh, find out when we plan on recording these shows and what the topics will be uh, by going to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements, such as a consent is my foreplay shirt, in various different styles, or hat, or I'm sure a mug will be flashed up soon here. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or or as I've been uh, having some of my taco soup uh, in a soup mug. Got one of those. Uh, also a chili bowl. Or chili mug. Bowl mug thing too. Which instead of having the rounded bottom, it's more of a square. Mm. Square it off. Um, get all of that at Zazzle. That's Zazzle.com slash uh, comes out loud. Hey, that consent of my foreplay shirt was designed by Smashy. Uh, where you can get a bunch of his, his stuff over at his uh, T Public page at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. Uh, if you would like to, you can also subscribe to us by go- becoming a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud. Uh, if you want to send us a donation, you can do that through paypal.me slash cubs out loud as well. You can find us on basically any podcasting pa- platform for the audio podcast uh, Apple, um, Google, Amazon, Audible. Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box that box, poppy box, called box, something or other, or windjump, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, where uh, I play Bears and Dragons and may do another Final Fantasy stream b- b- next weekend. Uh, I've just been kind of in the not wanting to, and plus I was having some issues this weekend. So, uh, while playing, so. 
Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, look at everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now.